we will see how this works. This is going to be a video that I will record on my computer first and then upload, I guess, because the internet sucks and it can't handle a live stream. This guide, this first one, it's going to be on how food works on Monster Hunter. I have a deal that is shown by this, which makes these 50% off. These are the ways to pay. It tells you that over here, and it gives you the selection over here. Pay with money, points, or vouchers. Can't get a deal on vouchers because you can't pay half of one voucher. Um, money, they generally cost 100 zenny, 50 points, or one voucher. Any of the three you pick. Um, these are the ingredients I have available, either the ones that the game has supplied me with when I first started, or ones that I have gathered since starting. I have five meats, two fish, and five vegetables. These are daily skills that will kind of fill in the, the skills that I'm not able to fill in for now on, uh, on my skill list once I do create a food platter. The reason that these will fill in right now is because I can only choose from two ingredients that will change later in the game when you upgrade the canteen and you eventually get to eat six things at the same time or eat six ingredients at the same time these are pre-made platters these are also pre-made platters um, <laughs> these aren't really that important because generally you won't be using them a whole lot um, there are three right now and eventually four types of food. The four types is just alcohol. It's not too important. But it's not too important on this game. In real life, it's, I, I'd beg to differ. Um, these are meats. And what they do is they can if you eat two of these or four or six out of the same row they will supply you with a skill over here which shows over there feline polisher and it's different for each of these and they stack so you can eat two of these you'll get they have let me explain this first they have Three different things from each category. It goes two, four, six. So it's two, four, six. There's only six from each category. Um, so you have feline polisher that often speeds up sharpening time. Usually when you sharpen a weapon, he goes ch -ch -ch, or one, two, three, and then he looks at his weapon. It sparkles a little bit and it sharpens. This one just cuts down all that time. Maybe he'll just go one, two, and look at his weapon. You know, it uh, it just speeds up the sharpening time. Feline Rider um, makes it easier to mount monsters. What this does is cause you to do more mount damage. Mount damage is anything that you, anytime you inflict damage to a monster while you're airborne, most of the time. There, there's like niche circumstances where you don't inflict mount damage, but makes it easier to mount monsters so you're in there you have your hammer out or your katana out your long sword gray sword whatever um this will do a certain percent more mount damage which is a hidden threshold that monsters have and once you max that threshold monsters will be mounted or become mountable um and that's the whole interaction that's for a different gameplay video, but generally this allows you to reach that threshold faster. Um, Slugger works about the same way, except it's inflicted differently. Um, it still has the hidden threshold, it's still kept up by the monster, uh, you know, um, it, it's a build up thing. This makes it easier to stun monsters, so just like this one, instead of mounting damage, you will do more stun damage. You will inflict more KO damage. Um, KO damage is done by either KO damage is just done by inflicting blunt damage to the head. It can't be anywhere else unless you land sticky ammo within 
sticky ammo like blows up and if the explosion touches the head it does carry damage the radius of it but generally like if you hit with any type of bladed weapon it's not going to do KO damage unless you say use a tackle with a great sword or you hit with your shield on sword and shield um, or you do a unique type of weapon animation to do KO damage to the head um, bows can do KO damage by dropping a ball sack on the enemy that rains from the sky um, and light bow gun and heavy bow gun can shoot sticky ammo and but generally like arrows or blades won't do this type of damage but for those that do it makes it easier it increases the damage done by stuns or it increases the sun damage which is completely different from just base damage it just helps you reach that threshold easier the hidden number um so you have these three which is you eat two meats or you eat four meats or you eat six meats if you eat six meats you will have an activation chance for all three of these if you eat four of these and two of these you will have an activation chance for both of these and one of these and if you eat four of these you'll have activation chance for two of these and one of these you can only ever eat six foods and get three skills like is shown over here and what I mean by activation chance is that when you get fresh foods which are designated by this green sparkle and this green vine coming out of whatever the fuck you're eating um, one it increases your hunter health by 10 up to up to five so if you eat six fresh foods your health isn't going to 160 it's going to 150 if this maxes out at five but your activation chance maxes out at three stars each each fresh food gives you half a star so if you eat just this one you get half a star if you eat both of these you get a full star this allows you to know the probability of getting your food skills to activate it also tells you the fresh ingredients that you have right here um we're gonna unselect this somehow whatever we're gonna restart okay and then so you have red i just went over that i'll go over blue um this is definitely one of the more helpful ones this one specifically um feline acrobat by the way these are called courage resilience vigor acumen and artillery it, it doesn't really matter a whole lot but Feline Acrobat allows the hunter to recover when sent flying. Certain monster attacks, when powerful enough, will cause your character to tumble away if they hit you hard enough. Um, this just allows you to get up quicker. You're like a ninja. You're moving fast. That's what it does. Feline Feet prevents you from getting knocked on your butt. Sometimes monsters will do attacks that make you stumble a little bit or don't send you back flying, like this one I described. Um, feline feet prevents you from getting knocked on your butt when you take less powerful hits you will sometimes just stumble backwards and fall on your butt and it takes a certain amount of time for that animation to happen so this prevents that you will either get flinched and you'll be like oh shit you know you're like it's it's just takes up less animation time your character might still react to it but it takes less time um or if you have flinch free which is an armor skill later on it might just completely prevent you from taking any acting like you got hit at all other than the damage it, all this does is eliminate the animation um feline moxie prevents fainting one time when damage exceeds your remaining health you'll get a threshold it, or either that's guts I don't know no I'm pretty sure they both have a threshold you'll get a threshold on your health if you get one shot above that threshold you remain at one health really good skill really good food skill um, if you have a damage over time or you have poison on you or fire on you good luck this won't save you you'll get up you'll be on fire you'll have one health and you'll die anyway Still a really good food skill though, if you're not on fire. Um, 
Feline riser, greatly extends the immobility period when getting up. When you're on the ground, when you get hit, and you get sent flying, or you're laying on the ground, or whatever, you have you're invulnerable. You can't be hit while you're just sitting there on the ground. This is helpful sometimes for late game fights when a monster's doing a chain of attacks, and you need to just not touch anything on your controller. Don't do anything because your character will stay on the ground for longer. This allows you to get further through the animation of getting off the ground and still retaining those those moments where your character's invulnerable. So you have more iframes when getting up. Never really noticed much of an effect, but then again, it's not something you really want to happen all the time. Um, because this means you're getting hit. Feline Black Belt, another pretty good food skill. Reduces stamina depletion when evading, blocking, or doing certain other actions. Really good for the bow, because you're always evading with it. Good for the light bow gun, because you're a lot of the time evading with it. And it just generally depletes a good share of actions you do in combat that take stamina. Pretty good though. This one, people don't really play with this in multiplayer. It's not really a multiplayer based skill for reasons that aren't important right now. But this increases your attack when your health is dangerously low, which I'm pretty sure the threshold is 35%. If you are below 35%, you're going to do a lot more damage. Um, don't really worry about that. That's a different style of gameplay. Feline Groomer has the duration of Defense Down and Spoots Up Light Recovery. Defense Down isn't really inflicted by that many things, so not too great. Double Joe inflicts it at some monsters down the road. Um, speeds Up Light Recovery. Things like uh, Poison and, and such, It'll you'll stay poisoned for... A shorter period of time so it's nice for that it's also just a excuse me there's just and there's also just an armor skill that that does this exact thing uh, blight res is what it's called you can get it later in the game um, so what what this might entail is like you get poisoned by a puke puke and you don't feel like drinking an antidote this will make you be poisoned for less time so less time means it has less time to inflict damage so it's going to wear off without having taken up you know whatever amount of your health bar or less of an amount of your health bar so good for that feline medic increases recovery from health items potions mega potions dust of life uh things that heal you but things don't, don't quite heal you 100 percent um this will increase the recovery from those unless you it takes the same amount of time to drink the potion this is important because there's there are things that allow you to drink them super fast uh it takes the same amount of time to drink a potion when using this food skill but you recover more health from drinking it um feline specialist increase the potency of abnormal status attacks so there when you have a weapon and especially in base game, which is kind of the only uh, form of damage you have is raw damage. Then there are two subtypes of damage out of those, not including KO damage or mounting damage or any of that other weird ass shit. Um, there are there's a weapon attribute called. There are elements and elements, and elements are things like fire, water, lightning, uh, ice, and dragon that your weapon is imbued with. It, it does that type of element damage, which lets you do more damage to certain monsters who are weak to that element, and their, their uh, hit zones because, you know, heads, forearms, tails, and stuff are generally weaker parts of monsters they they might also take more elemental damage which is where like that value would come into play when you're hunting and 
deciding what parts you need to hit on what monster or what element you need to bring. But but for this food skill, um, statuses or elements are what's important. Uh, elements are things such as blast, paralysis, sleep, and poison. So this increases just like these two the amount of damage that you deal the amount of paralysis damage or sleep damage or you know things completely unrelated to actual damage or blast damage or it affects the rate it, that blast builds up it increases the rate that poison builds up it increases the rate that paralysis and sleep build up um, it does not increase any sort of damage it just lets you paralyze the monster quicker, sleep the monster quicker, uh, causes blast to go off quicker, or allows you to poison it quicker. Um, so, not too great because you're only going to, you're only going to trigger those status effects so many times in a hunt anyways because the, the threshold, the resistance of the monster goes up every time you inflict one of these to that specific element. Um, next one. Feline Sharpshooter, also really good for bows. A lot of people will eat for Black Belt. Four on, four on Vigor and two on Artillery because this increases the normal shots from bow guns. Not that important, but also increases the damage from normal arrows. So, increase the power of. This actually increases the damage where things like this and these two don't increase any sort of real visible damage. This, is, this increases your mainly normal errors damage feline bombarder there are certain maps where you get to shoot a ballista this increases the damage it does uh, heavy bow gun and light bow gun can shoot sticky ammo which does carry damage which also explodes and does really good raw damage it's the only way to describe it um, it does a fixed amount of damage it cannot crit or it does not have any affinity, which is something I'll go on in a later video. Um, this increases the damage for these things, and it also increases gun lance shell damage, which is the gun lance just exploding every three seconds or less, probably. Um, feline pyro upgrades large barrel bombs to mega barrel bombs. These are better than these, these are bigger than these, these do more damage than these. It just lets you lets you use large barrel bombs. So remember, as I said, fresh ingredients, activation chance. Fresh ingredients, hunter health. Can't eat six foods right now, so it caps out at plus twenty health. Once you can eat six foods, it caps out at plus fifty health. Once you can eat six of them, and you get six fresh ingredients in a row, you can get a, like a, I want to say it's a 100% chance for all the things you're trying to eat for. You can also use special vouchers to make everything, uh, don't remember if it makes everything fresh, or if it just, which it doesn't matter, because I'm pretty sure it just gives you 100% activation chance, and it gives you plus 50 health. So, it gives you what you want, that's what's important. Um, you will get stamina for eating these. So, plus 25 stamina, um, plus 20 health, you know, like I said. Now, meats, this is the last thing in the canteen menu, but meats, you eat two of these, you get a tag up small. You eat four of these, you get a tag up medium. You eat six of these, you get a tag up large. Fish, you get defense. Defense up, not too important. Um, veggies, you get elemental res resistance of small. You eat four, you get medium, you get six, you get large. Um, eventually you'll get alcohol. Again, not that important. It also comes with another sub tier of uh, food skills you can get. Um, don't really need to worry about this for now. Not the most important thing. Especially since we're trying to save our points for other things right now. But that is the canteen menu. There's old chef back there. You can talk to you can talk to this guy, this guy, 
uh, random other people around this place who have exclamation marks over their head if they that's the type of quest they're giving you can go to the research area which we haven't unlocked yet um you'll, you'll see that area later in the game and they will give you quests to get to canteen ingredients which gives you more foods to choose from and if you have more foods in the same category that means you can unlock better food skills or unlock those food skills that I showed off so you can also get them by doing these quests which you come here post a new quest go to optional go to this one oh look this one has a dialogue box on it which means there is a part of a quest line and they're probably going to give us something or it doesn't have to be part of quest line, it could just be one quest, but it's a request from somebody. It has a dialogue box up here. You talk to someone to get this quest. And you can tell it's going to give you a new canteen ingredient because it says unlocks new canteen ingredient on the first time completion. So you complete this, you get a new food. You get a new thing to choose from. Just like this, these two, both of these, unlocks a new canteen ingredient. You need to do these. It makes you have an easier time it helps out a lot. Food skills are very helpful for completing hunts. It's just it it's a bunch of small things to help you on the hunt that add up to to the hunt being much more manageable. You do everything you can and prepare in every way you can to make the hunt easy. Once you do so many things, it, it will just be easy. Um you can also and this is the last way to gather ingredients. You can travel to these areas and explore. So that's half of what this game is about. It's just looking around at pretty things. And when I load in, I can show you that certain plants or things unique to each specific zone or biome, like this is the wild spire waste and that is the ancient forest these two places have generally different resources together so if you see I will come over uh, when I get unlost let me actually pull out my map real quick it's kinda useful we have maps if you okay I'm actually just stupid. It, it wasn't even over here. But, I will... I swear it's somewhere in here. Okay. That's not it. It's not what I was looking for. Hmm. Anyway. Just wait till I find it. Oh no, don't get... That's one of the elements I was talking about. They, If these things sing you, you will probably get paralyzed. Not a fun time. Where's my phone going off? Oh. Caleb Cubbage. I will call him when I'm done with this. But. Anyway. You can... Find certain little plants and hopefully I'll find one soon but you can find certain little plants that have a chance to give you a new ingredient you just keep keep harvesting them until you get the thing you're looking for so I'm not really looking around too much but just adventure generally these things go around like the ones in this area will grow more around caves these are cactuses I'm pretty sure you can get an ingredient from this maybe or not I don't know but things like that um, little plants that are unique to the to each ecosystem that you're in not those assholes we don't care about them
That's also just a night suit. I keep mistaking that for what I'm actually looking for. Let's go this way, away from the big dragon. See if there's anything in here. This little pillar type thing in here. These are bone piles. They'll also usually have things that you that are unique to each ecosystem. Let's see. I really just want to find a plant. This does have something unique in here, though. Oh, this is actually it. So. We'll gather these things, tusk and fruit, this fruit, so you can eat it, right? Makes sense. You'll get hard fruit, and you will get, you'll get rock fruit if you're luckier than I am, and that is a canteen ingredient. So you kind of adventure around here, you grab your stuff. This water's very blue. Jesus. Um, grab your ingredients. And now you have a new ingredient. Also, same thing in the ancient forest. Wish I would have found that rock fruit quicker. But anyway, you can open up your map and travel straight there if you're on an expedition. So it gives you this little menu. My palico gathered that. I got this. Okay, so it was an ingredient, the cactus that, that we got. So, you know, just adventure around gather things, collect them, use them, eat them, and then slay monsters because of them. So I'm going to come this way. My computer's buzzing up right now for some reason. And there's another ingredient over here. And you can get, there's a grasshoppers. Don't know if you can see them since I'll be streaming in less of a resolution than I'm playing it. But pretty sure you can eat these. Everyone loves mushrooms. Mushrooms are good. Gourmet shroom caps. Gourmet sounds like something you can eat. Catch this beetle. Whatever. Thank you, John. And that is basically it. You you gather ingredients, you do quests for ingredients, you talk to people for ingredients, you feel you feel commands to get ingredients. You do what the people say. You make the people happy. You get ingredients. And you use them to do all that stuff earlier that I went over with, with eating and food skills and health. As you can see right now, I have 115 health. That is because of a health boost skill. But if I had eaten and I had gotten that plus 20 health, I would be at 135 health, which is a good bit different. It'll keep you alive longer. You can take a bigger hit, take more hits. Damn, bro. And take more hits. And your health will max out at 200. Can't do that right now because we can only eat two ingredients. But you get health boosts. Sorry, you can do that right now. You just have to have the right stuff for it. But that's not important because that's not specifically food related. Um, but yeah, you can max out a 200 health. Helps out a lot more than having 100 health. Takes late game, late game uh, engagements from a one shot to you being able to take one hit and then get out of the way of another one. And you can heal after that. Vastly easier game being able to survive one hit or being able to survive two hits rather than one hit. And that is it for food guide because this is at 30 minutes.